In this video, I'm going to show you how to decorate purchase wooden birdhouses, steampunk style, using materials in the Infinite Possibilities Create Along box. Hi there, I'm Sandy Huntress for Create Along. Here are a couple little wooden birdhouses I purchased at my local craft store. They're very inexpensive and really cute. And here's one that I decorated using many of the materials in the in the Create Along box. There are a few tricky finer points that you need to understand before you cover something wooden with polymer clay. Wood contains some moisture and so it tends to expand and contract as it heats and cools, which can cause problems for polymer clay. You can see on this little roof I had some bubbling. So on this one, we're going to take a few steps to ensure that that doesn't happen. One precautionary step I took, I'm not sure how much of a difference it made, but I took both of my little houses and put them in the oven, a 275 degree oven, for about an hour and a half and then let them cool before I even, just to dry them out a bit before decorating. Before we could start decorating our houses, we just want to do a little bit of prep. First of all, I'm going to grab these little perches and with a, just a big pair of pliers. Give it a gentle twist and it should pull right out. And then we can replace those perches with other cool kind of things, more steampunky. And it also makes it a lot easier to add the veneer to the front. One of the things I realized that might have caused the problems with the bubbling was that I wrapped these edges of the roof over, completely over the edge, thus sealing them in and sealing in any air pockets. What I am going to do is paint the entire thing with the metallic paint that came in the, in the box. This will do a few things. It helps seal the wood a bit, hopefully so it won't absorb moisture. And it also makes it so that we don't have to cover every single surface of the birdhouse. If you look at this one, underneath the roof on the edges is painted. Also, the base is painted. So we won't have to cover that with clay. That does a couple things. It gives us a place to hold on to it while we're covering it with clay. And it also allows me to just put slabs of clay on here rather than having to cover the whole thing and seal it in. And hopefully that will help eliminate some of the bubbling. While the paint on your birdhouse is drying, you can prepare some polymer clay for covering the birdhouse. You can do this in lots of different ways. You can just simply have a straight color of clay and then add a texture. A couple of my favorite things for adding sort of industrial steampunky texture are things that you can find at the hardware store such as sanding mesh. This is drywall sanding mesh and you can use that to add a texture. You may want to add a little bit of armor all or some kind of or even just a bit of water as a release. You can see that there have been times when I got clay stuck in my mesh. This is great because it sometimes leaves behind little gritty bits that really add to the sort of industrial look. Oh, and here's another thing from the hardware store. This is some brass screen that leaves a really great texture. And notice I'm doubling up with the textures. You can certainly do that. Now I think it looks even better if you at least double up the surface embellishments on your sheets of clay. This one has some magic transfers that came in the Infinite Possibilities box. I added those. Then I used the Ripples and Waves silk screen to silk screen on here in silver over top. It just gives it so much depth. So there's one with two layers. Here's another one with two layers. I used some of the grunge foil on this clay first. This was copper clay. This is antique gold clay, by the way. So I used some of the goldish foil on the clay. And all of my clay veneers, by the way, are rolled out on a number six on my pasta machine, which is about one millimeter thick. It's not real thick. I didn't think I needed big thick sheets to cover this birdhouse. 
I applied the foil to my sheet, however, when it was at a thicker setting, and then after the foil was applied, I ran it through the machine on a thinner setting, first in one direction, then turn in a 90 degree angle and run in another direction to give some crackles. Then I used the Infinite Possibilities, the Gears silkscreen, to silkscreen over this in ivory. So here are two examples of two layers of embellishments on your clay. And of course you can go on, you can add mica powders, you can add alcohol inks. Here's another example where I added some of the magic transfers, and imperfectly. <laughs> they didn't come out great, but that was okay because we're just using bits and pieces of this anyways. Then I added foil on top, and this time I didn't crackle the foil, so you really get a very bright, shiny result, which I will tone down later with paint. Then I used the Tiny Gears Deco Disc to press into this with the texture. And here's another example of where I added the Magic Transfer papers, and then silk screened over using the Infinite Possibilities silk screen with gold paint. This one is copper, and I only have the one layer of embellishment, the ivory paint, and I've brushed over that with the matte metallic that came in the box. And this one is just all of my scraps that were on my table. I gathered them up, rolled them together a few times, and there you go. And I'll texture this. And probably use this for the back. You could go over this again with magic transfer paper, with foil, with silk screen. Now if you cover the two sides, the back, the front, and the roof, both sides of the roofs of your house with polymer clay, that would be six sides. You can do six different sheets, or you could just do a couple. You can piece them together. Now the house is dry, you can start covering it with polymer clay. Now you do have an option here, if you don't want to deal with all of the potential bubbling and such, you can cut your pieces to size, bake them flat, and then glue them onto the house afterwards. It will make it a little bit trickier to add your decorations and such, but you can do it that way. What I'm going to do first is cut the piece for my back. You can do that by laying your house on the sheet and use a craft knife. We'll first mark out, sorry if my head's in the way, but we'll mark out this part and we can just follow that line straight across to cut this line. And then we'll mark the underside of the roof and, and such. I'm going to place my blade, I don't want to angle it too far in because I don't want to cut it too small, but I'm going to kind of ride it along this edge and try to make sure that it's just outside that line. It'd be easier to trim it down. Although if you cut it too small, you can stretch it out a little. So you can lay your blade right across those two lines and cut straight down and that will give you the bottom. Then lay your blade right along this angled line, line it up with it, and that will give you your peak once you do both of them. Next brush a little liquid clay onto the surface of your birdhouse, and then you can apply your piece. And it's nice because it kind of slides on the liquid clay a little bit. It is a little short there, so I'm going to slide it up to the peak so it meets, and then I can just kind of squish that over and make it meet. And I'm going to definitely, I want to press this down. Try not to trap any air under there. For the sides and the roof, because they are rectangles, we can simply take careful measurements and cut pieces. One thing I'm not going to do is try to meet up these edges too carefully. Again, because I don't want to trap air in there. I've cut my piece for one side, added TLS to that slide, and I'm just going to 
slide this up underneath that roof and lay it on. And again, I'm going to kind of burnish it down and see if that will make a difference in not having air bubbles. You can add, like I said before, mica powders or anything you want to your clay to enhance the texture. This is interesting. It's not really a, um, a, a mica powder. This came in a previous Create a Long box. It's kind of a, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of adding dirt to it. <laughs> in a good way though, where you want something kind of vintage and old looking. It just dirties it up a little and adds, uh, highlights the texture, but doesn't add any shimmer or shine. Which, you know, sometimes you have a project with a lot of shiny things. We have the foils, we have the metallic clay. Sometimes you just want to tone it down a little. For this side, I'm going to do a different approach, kind of a piecing together effect. Mostly because, well, two reasons. First of all, this is very bright, so I don't know that I want an entire side uh, with this coloration. And also because I only have so much of it and I don't really want to make more. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut straight edges and then add that on. Slide it up under that roof edge. And by the way, these pieces with foil on them or with paint on them, you can mix them together. The black will kind of mix in and make it speckled, but you definitely don't have to throw away that clay. You can just use it for other things. Use it for things that where you want more of a grunge effect and less shiny and perfect. So I'm going to piece that in right next to that and just kind of butt it up against it. And I'm just sliding it till it meets that roof. And then just slide it over. I think I'll come back to this once I'm done with my other pieces so I can use leftover bits rather than cutting up my good pieces. And if you have a hard time tucking pieces into corners, one helpful tool is just a soft brush. You can kind of get it up there, press it in, and you won't be flattening your texture noticeably. Now that you have that piece cut out, before you put liquid clay on the front, just lay it in place. Find those holes. There might be one, and this one it has two. And go ahead and run your finger around the holes. You can also kind of find the holes for the the perch and just press. You just want to make an impression on the back side. And there, now you can see that. Cut out leaving a good, um, yeah, not quite, maybe not quite a quarter of an inch more than an eighth of an inch. You want more than the thickness of these holes because what we're going to do is press that in and cover up those edges. But you could also cut it out exactly on the line and have it come up right to the edge. But I think this looks good having it pressed in there like that. You can just make a mark there so you know where to push something in. I like to line up the peak as before and then make it fit. You can just take your finger and gently ease around that circle and because it's clay, it should, unless you it should just go ahead and conform. Press that in so you don't have air bubbles under there. Repeat to take your measurements and add your slabs for the roof. And by the way, these particular birdhouses came with a little hanging cord, which you can leave the hole and cut around it. I'm not planning on hanging them, 
So I'm just going to take some scrap clay and stuff it down in there and make it conform. to that shape, that roof line shape. And now just go ahead and, and cover it like we did the sides. I just used the cutoffs here from this to fill out as much of this side of the roof as I could and then just filled in with a strip. So you just cut straight edges and butt them up against each other. And to trim this flush with the rooftop, you can just lay it on your tile and use your blade and then you get a nice neat trim. And now the entire root, uh, house is covered. Well, all six sides, just those edges aren't covered. Now you can start decorating this however you like. There are so many possibilities. I added this fun little pipe detail and all I did was I rolled out some silver clay and found some hardware that would work but if you don't have anything like this you can just roll balls of a color of clay make an indent and then stick your pipes in there I think I'll put mine right here and that way that makes that strip look a little bit more purposeful to get these 90 degree bends you just hold it where you want it to bend between both sets of index fingers and thumbs. And where you want it to bend, you're going to actually push. You're not so much bending, but you're pushing your fingers together. And now you get that really nice crisp bend. So let's see, we'll go from here and maybe here. So just push them together. This is also a great way to make knees in dolls. <laughs> and elbow joints is to make that that sharp bend without stretching out the clay in a funky way. And then I'm going to use my blade to cut across those so they're both the same length. You can just roll a ball, flatten it. I think I actually want more of a cylinder. So I'm going to kind of roll it on its end there. And I'll just take the end of my blade and make an indent. Just stick those there and put the ends in. Maybe a little liquid clay would not go amiss. You can use a needle tool. Oh, this is the end of an etch and pearl to make holes around it. And there you go. I'm actually going to use some hardware that I have though. I just wanted to show you how to do that. I think these will be a good size. These are just little hex nuts. <laughs> I'm going to put two on. You could stack these up. And what's fun about these is that they'll, they'll actually move. They're not going to be glued in place. They'll just be hold, held in place with the clay. But you don't, you don't have to have the exact same things I have. That's the fun of this kind of a thing. It's just look around. Look at what you have and see how you can use it in a creative way. Put a little liquid clay on those ends. And press them into place. And then I probably will have to support that while it's baking to help it keep its shape. I may even prop the house like this on some batting just to keep this exactly where I want it. Because of its weight, I am going to have to add this back to my house at the very end because it's just going to slide off. You could also ha add some Lisa Pavelka Polybonder. My bottle has run out, so I don't have that to use. That does a great job. It's like a super glue, but it's actually set in the heat of the oven. So once it's baked, it's permanent, but it holds whereas regular super glue often will let go. So let me show you a few other cool things you can do. If you have the etch and pearl tools, you can use them to make little screw heads, but you can do it without that too. Just roll a sheet of clay. It's the thickness that you want your screw heads to be. Use the etch and pearl to press in. 
And let's see. Maybe we'll maybe we'll put one right there. And give it a little twist. Here's a Phillips head screwdriver tip. Just pop that in there and now it looks like you have a screw. On this house I did a row of them here and a row of them here. You can put them wherever you want. Here's a few other details. I did add chain. I glued chain. I actually used the last of my poly bonder to glue the chain to this clay that was on the edge of the roof. But where this, I don't have clay here. You might want to do that after it's baked if you want to add just some some fine chain as a trim or you could do something like this and make it draped that would be interesting and just uh, have some um, small brads or nails that would hold this in place almost like a garland these are some clock hands see if you can see what I did I have rolled a snake of clay and ran it through the holes on both clock hands so here's what the clock hand end looks like. It's got a fair amount of thickness. So I rolled my snake of clay, fished it through both clock hands, and then squished some onto this clay before it was baked so that I would have a clay to clay attachment. And then I kind of mushroomed out the rest of the clay on the top here. I'll show you what I mean. Just roll that in, kind of mushroom out this end and then trim that and mushroom out this end. That way you have a mechanical connection for your clock hands. And then I pressed a gear right there to just kind of hide the clay and decorate it. Over here I used a combination of polybonder and liquid clay to glue these metal pieces in. I thought this was kind of fun. This is something you can find in lots of colors. There's actually a whole line of steampunky kind of things at Michael's. What's it called? Vin vintage something? Vintage elements or something like that. But they've got cool stuff like, like top hats, which I'd forgotten I was thinking of putting on this one. I thought it would be kind of adorable. Remove that jump ring and have a little top hat somewhere on it. Maybe at a jaunty angle. I'll have to play with it a bit more and decide. If you have an area, maybe you dinged it with your fingernail, or you just want to add a little bit of whimsy to it, you can add patches. And then use a ball tool to add little dots all around it so that it looks like it's riveted. And find some kind of cool or funky piece to stick in the, um, the, the holes for the bird purchase. And also, if you have gears that have big holes in the center, you can put those right over the windows, so the openings for the birds, which is kind of fun. So I hope you have fun with this project, just getting creative and experimenting and playing. Do be sure, do keep in mind the properties of polymer clay, which may slump a bit in the oven and support whatever you need to before you put it into bake. And if, if things fall off, I had a few things I had to re-glue after it came out. Just use some super glue and it will hold great. So here are my two houses after being baked and antiqued. And you can see that this one does have a little bit of bubbling, but a whole lot less than this one did. Just a few tiny areas where it had bubbles. So I definitely recommend the panel method rather than the wraparound method. Antiquing just brings out all those details. Have a great time gathering up a bunch of cool steampunk supplies and making yourself something kind of fun. I hope you enjoyed this project. I'm looking forward to seeing yours. Again, this is Sandy Huntress for Create Along. Happy creating.